I'm David Hughes. Welcome to the introduction to our series on Bhagavad Gita. I don't want to talk so much about what Bhagavad Gita is. I would rather talk about what Bhagavad Gita is not. Bhagavad Gita is not an ordinary scripture. It is not written by ordinary human beings, but it is spoken by Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is accepted in all the Vedic literatures as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So his knowledge is beyond ordinary human intelligence. His wisdom is beyond the reach of the human mind to generate or even to fully comprehend. God is actually very difficult to understand. But when God explains himself, everything is very clear and simple. So Bhagavad Gita is God talking about himself, about us, and about our relationship with him. Bhagavad Gita is actually the original theistic science and the original scripture in the world. Bhagavad Gita was written down in its current form about 5,000 years ago. But as Krishna reveals in the beginning of the fourth chapter, he spoke this same science to the sun god millions and millions of years ago. So actually, Bhagavad Gita is probably the oldest living text of spiritual knowledge in the entire world today. We have to take Bhagavad Gita as it is. In other words, without speculative interpretation or philosophical adjustment to match our preconceived notions of reality. Because Bhagavad Gita is a sacred science. It is passed down through a sequence of self-realized teachers and esoteric schools from extreme antiquity down to the present day. These esoteric schools are founded and run by teachers who have actually realized the divine philosophy of the Gita and are seeing Krishna face to face within their own hearts. The conclusion of Bhagavad Gita is that one should completely surrender to God, Krishna, and render unmotivated and uninterrupted devotional service to him. This will actually satisfy the soul, and this will actually bring us to the summit of self-realization. Another thing that Bhagavad Gita is not, is it's not a treatise on monism or oneness with God. Some people would like to interpret the Gita that way, but that school of interpretation is only about 1,500 years old. The Gita is much, much older, and its tradition is completely separate from the tradition of the impersonalists or the Shankarites. Bhagavad Gita is sometimes known as Gita Upanishad because it is the summary of all the topics discussed in the Upanishads. The Upanishads are questions and answers based on the Vedas. If you read the original four Vedas, you will find that you'll have more questions than answers. The Upanishads, beginning with the 108 principal Upanishads compiled by Vyasadeva, the author of the Vedas himself, are a series of questions and answers about the topics raised in the Vedas. Upanishad means come close and sit down. In other words, approach a self-realized spiritual master. Sit down and hear very patiently from him. Another interpretation of Upanishad is to ask questions into the nature of reality, not from anyone, but from someone who has realized that reality. The actual reality, according to the Vedas, is spiritual. We cannot explain consciousness by any combination of material phenomena. Therefore, consciousness is a transcendental symptom of the presence of the soul. The science of the soul is explained in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, and understanding this science is a prerequisite for understanding the rest of the topics in Bhagavad Gita. Another thing that Bhagavad Gita is not is a religious scripture. Although many religions can and have been based on Bhagavad Gita, actually Bhagavad Gita is beyond religion. Religion is a concept of human beings, and religions are created by human beings to propagate spiritual teachings. But actually, at the end of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, give up all different kinds of religion. 
and just surrender to me. Spiritual life is not an institutional process. It's an individual process. And we are all meant to have an individual, personal relationship with God. In the beginning, our relationship with God may be based on philosophical and religious principles. But in the end, our relationship with Him is very intimate and based completely on love. This transcendental love, or bhakti, is the real theme and the real meaning of Bhagavad Gita. Everything else discussed in the Gita is simply preliminary to understanding the concept of bhakti, or transcendental love. Bhakti yoga is the highest of the many types of yogas discussed in the Vedas and especially in Bhagavad Gita. Everyone is craving love, but our experience in the material world is that we can never get the quantity or quality of love that we desire. This is because we are fundamentally spiritual entities and the laws of nature operating in the material world operate in such a way that we can never get the spiritual satisfaction we desire. Spiritual entities are eternal and everything in this world is temporary. So the real satisfaction that we're trying to find is always elusive until we realize that we can meet God within our own hearts and exchange loving service with Him eternally, regardless of the presence or absence or change of the material body. The condition of the material body is simply a reflection of the uh, force of time operating on the three modes of material nature. Bhagavad Gita explains this very clearly. The real self is the soul, and the real beloved of the soul is God. When we understand this, and when we realize that love of God in an intimate personal exchange within our hearts, we become completely satisfied. So Bhagavad Gita actually gives the solution to all the problems of life. We invite you to view all the videos in this series which summarize the main points of Bhagavad Gita, and also to download the text of Bhagavad Gita, which is available on our website at this URL. Please read along as we discuss the different chapters so that you understand what we're referring to and what we're talking about. If you have any questions, you can also join our online course at esotericteaching.org and you can post a question on our forums. I will be happy to respond to you personally. So I hope you enjoy our presentation and that you get a lot out of it, that you're able to actually apply this knowledge in your life and attain the highest platform of self-realization, pure love of God. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya